Leola and the Honey Bears, an African-American retelling of Goldilocks and the Three Bears by Melody Benson Rosales. Leola and the Honey Bears. Look, Grandmama, look! Leola sang out as she struggled to pull the biggest, wettest bed sheet from the laundry basket. Monday was always wash day, and much to her grandmother's surprise, Leola had decided to help hang out the sheets. Listen, child, just put that sheet down before you get it all full of dirt. First, Leola's grandmother. Leola sighed, but I just wanted to help. I know, sugar pie, but I don't need any help right now, Grandmama replied. You go on and play now, but don't go straying off anywhere and don't go talking to strangers. Then she went back to her wash. When she looked up again, Leola was merrily dancing away, headed for the nearby meadow. You hear me, Leola? Grandmama shouted after her. Mind me and don't go straying off. Leola did hear her grandmother, but she paid her no mind. She didn't even answer her. Leola and her grandmother lived in a small cozy cottage, not far from the pine hollow woods. When Leola got away, she could be as sweet as brown sugar, but when she didn't, she could be as stubborn as Grandmama's old mule. Today, Leola could find nothing fun to do. I'm bored, she complained, and I don't care what my Grandmama says. I'm going to do what I want to. Suddenly, Leola caught sight of some milkweed seeds blowing in the breeze across the meadow. She squealed as she watched the silky pots float farther and farther from the cottage. Off she ran, chasing after them. After running for a while, Leola finally looked back. Nothing looked familiar, but Leola didn't care. She was having too much fun following the cotton-like balls. Right into the pine hollow woods. Before she knew it, Leola was surrounded by prickly bushes and towering pine trees. The sunlight had all but disappeared. She turned around full circle, but she couldn't tell which way was home. Oh no, cried Leola as she stared into the darkness. I must be lost. Now way down deep in the pine hollow woods, stood a charming little inn. It was owned by a family known as the Honey Bears. Papa Honey Bear was a great big bear. Mama Honey Bear was a middle-sized bear. Little Honey was little, just like his name. Woodland folks from far and near came to visit the Honey Bears Inn. They dined on delicious daily delights like dandelion stew, double dip daffodil custard and sweet daisy dough cakes. Cheerful chatter and hearty laughter always filled the inn. Come evening time, Papa Honey Bear sat in his great big oak chair and gobbled his great big toasted walnuts. Mama Honey Bear sat in her middle-sized easy chair and munched her middle-sized toasted chestnuts. And little honey sat in his little wooden chair and nibbled his little chocolate-covered pine nuts. On this particular morning, after Mama Honey Bear had served the last of her boysenberry grits to Mr. Hare and his grandbaby Bunny, she decided to make some special treats for her own family. She baked a great big plum pie for Papa Honey Bear and a middle-sized rose petal cobbler for herself and a little huckleberry tart for Little Honey. When Papa Honey Bear and Little Honey had finished their morning chores, they were as hungry as, well, bears. 
Oh, darlings, chuckled Mama Honey Bear. Those pies just came out of the stove. They're much too hot now. Why don't we head over to Parsons Pond and catch a mess of catfish? By the time we get back, I'm sure the pies will be cool enough to eat. Meanwhile, poor Leola was still wandering around the deepest, darkest part of the Pine Hollow Woods. I promised always to listen to my grandmama, no matter how much I want to do what I want to, Leola said. Just please let me find my way back home. Weary and confused, Leola plopped down on a damp patch of ground. Suddenly, the cool forest air filled with a warm, sweet smell. That must be my grandmama's crackling biscuits baking, said Leola. Now I know I can find my way. But before Leola could finish, old Mr. Weasel came slowly slinking by. Howdy, sweet little missy, he said in his oily voice. Old Mr. Weasel gave a sly smirk as he hungrily licked his lips. Leola quickly hopped to her feet at the sight of the stranger. Old Mr. Weasel laughed out loud. Now, now, child, I don't mean to scare you, mum. He slithered around this way and that way. I just wanted to eat you whole. With that, Leola took off running as fast as her feet could carry her following the sweet smell that still filled the woods. Soon she came to a large clearing. As Leolia wiped the sweat from her brow, she saw a little house in the distance. This must be a stranger's house, Leolia thought to herself as she looked back over her shoulder for old Mr. Weasel. I know my grandmama told me about strangers, but I can't go back cause old Mr. Weasel will eat me for sure. So Leola headed straight for the honey bear's inn. She knocked on the heavy wooden door, but no one answered. The door was open just a little, so she poked her head in. Hello, Leola hollered. Excuse me, please. Are you folks in? Still no one answered. I know my grandmama said, Never go inside folks' house until first being politely asked. But I don't think she'd mind this time. And she quietly crept inside. The first thing to catch Leola's eye were the tasty looking treats sitting out on the kitchen counter. Leola squealed. I'm so hungry. I know my grandmama said never help yourself in folks' kitchen until first being politely asked. But I don't know how she mind this time. So Leola struck her small finger into Papa Honeybear's great big plum pie and tasted it. Ooh, no! Leola cried as she puckered her lips. It was much too sour. Then she took a taste from Mama Honey Bear's middle-sized rose petal cobbler. Ooh, no, it was much too sweet. Finally, she tasted Little Honey's little huckleberry tart, and it was absolutely delicious. Leolia gobbled it down right then and there. Oh, I'm so tired, Leola said as she let out a big yawn. I know, my grandmama said, never sit down in folks' house until first being politely asked. But I don't think she'd mind this time. Leola was beginning to feel right at home. First she sat in Papa Honey Bear's great big chair, but it was much too hard. And so were his toasted walnuts. Then she sat in Mama Honey Bear's middle-sized chair, but it was much too soft, and so were her roasted chestnuts. Finally, Leola sat in Little Honey's little wooden chair. It felt like it was made just for her, and she loved his chocolate-covered pine nuts. She ate everyone. 
Yummy, yum, yum. Before long, Viola had stuffed herself so full of huckleberry tart and chocolate-covered pine nuts that the buttons on her dress began to pull and her tummy began to ache. And then, kaboom! Little Honey's little wooden chair broke all to pieces. Oh my, Leola moaned. I know my grandmama said, never make yourself too comfortable in folks' house until first being politely asked. But I don't think she'd mind this time. Leola dragged herself up from the floor to look for a place to lie down. At the top of the stairs, Leola found the honey bear's bedroom with three neatly made beds all in a row. First, she lay down on Papa Honey Bear's great big bed, but it was much too hard. Then she lay down on Mama Honey Bear's middle-sized bed, but it was much too soft. Finally, she lay down on Little Honey's little bed, and it was just right. Without another yawn, Leola fell asleep. By this time, the honey bears were on their way home, laughing and singing their favorite fishing song. Many fish are in the brook. Papa caught them with a hook. Mama fried them in a pan. Baby eat him like a man. When Papa honey bear swung open the door, the honey bears could not believe their eyes. Their cozy little inn looked like a strong gust of wind had just whipped through it. Everything was upside down and inside out. Look, growled Papa Honey Bear in his great big bear voice. Somebody's been eating my plum pie. And look, cried Mama Honey Bear in her middle-sized bear voice. Somebody's been eating my rose petal cobbler. And look, squeaked little honey in his little bear voice. Somebody ate every bit of my huckleberry tart. Look! Papa Honey Bear growled in his great big bear voice. Somebody's been sitting in my chair eating my walnuts. And somebody's been sitting in my chair, cried Mama Honey Bear in her middle-sized voice. And they left chestnuts all over it. And somebody helped himself to all my chocolate-covered pine nuts and broke my chair all to pieces, squealed Little Honey in his little voice as his little brown eyes welled up with tears. Shh, Mama Bear whispered. What's that strange sound? With Papa Honey Bear leading the way, they all tiptoed up the stairs. They crept past Papa Bear's great big bed and around Mama Bear's middle-sized bed until they reached Little Honey's little bed and they gasped up what they saw. Look, squealed Little Honey, a stranger! Startled, Leola woke up and saw three angry-looking bears leaning over her. Oh, please, don't eat me, Leola cried. We're not going to eat you, Mama Honey Bear said sternly. But didn't your folks teach you any manners? Yes, ma'am, Leola stammered. My grandmama always told me never to go into folks' house and never help yourselves in folks' kitchen and never ever sit down and make yourself too comfortable until first being politely asked. But I couldn't find my way back home and old little Mr. Weasel tried to eat me and I was so scared and hungry and I didn't think anyone would mind just this time. As the tears flowed down Leola's face, Mama Honey Bear saw that she was only a youngster, no dif different from her own little honey. Soon all was forgiven. Mama Honey Bear took her best straw basket, stuffed it full of scrumptious treats and covered it with one of her prettiest lace doilies. As she handed the basket to Leola, Mama Honey Bear called to Miss Blackbird, who was hovering overhead. Miss Blackbird, would you mind guiding this child back home? We don't want her getting lost again. Why, surely, Mama Honey, Miss Blackbeard replied. But we need to get going, child. It will be dark soon. Mama Honey Bear gave Leola a tender goodbye bear hug. You were lucky this time, Leola, she said. But you might not be the next time. 
Your grandmama told you to write. She must love you very much. Viola had taken only a few steps down the path when she turned to wave at her new friends. Mama Honey Bear pulled little honey extra close and Papa Honey Bear put his arm around her as they all waved goodbye. As Leola neared the open meadow, she smelled fresh washed laundry flapping in the breeze. With home in sight, she heard Grandmama calling, and this time Leola did answer back. From that day on, even when she wanted to do what she wanted to, Leola always listened to her Grandmama. Well, most of the time, and she never strayed too far from home again.